Dr. Josh Bletzinger, and in this video, we're going to ask the question, what's wrong with my blood sugar? And we're also going to answer the question, what's wrong with my blood sugar? Because when we're playing the diabetes game, when we're chasing the blood sugar woes, we are looking at a situation that when you go to the doctor, when you get diagnosed with type 2 diabetes based on high blood sugars, high glucose, and high A1C, there's ultimately something wrong with your sugar. So the idea here is to beat down the blood sugars. That's really the only game in town. So the question is then, and even if you ask this, like what's wrong with my blood sugar? So let's dig into this right here and let's find out what's wrong uh, with my blood sugars. And like I said, when you go to the doctor, you get that first diagnosis, it's A1C and glucose. It's A1Cs and blood sugars that are going to predict the diagnosis and they're going to warrant the development of your medication prescription strategy as well as your diet. Go to the dietary counselor, get your carbs counted, get your little plate with the, with the materials on it to, to, you know, to start showing you how to eat. And then ultimately you better diet and you better exercise. And that's your counseling. That's your counseling for the rest of your life as you continue to build frustrations and try and figure out and wonder why nothing is working. So what's wrong with my blood sugar? It's the wrong question. The question with this is not that your A1C and your blood sugar are, and your yeah and your glucose are high, but ultimately what's wrong with the systems that regulate blood sugar? So that's the question here. If we can no longer regulate blood sugar and we're diagnosed as a type two diabetic, what systems are not working right that ultimately don't allow the body to metabolize sugar correctly? And this is the question that should be asked. And it's worth the investigation because when you find out what systems are not working right, what systems are, are not regulating sugar correctly, then you're going to get your answers. So if you continue to play the blood sugar game, you're never going to get this correct because you're just going to continue to beat down blood sugars. Think of this. You have a pond of water. If you have a bucket and you're trying to bail out and drain the pond with the bucket, but the pond is being filled by a stream, you're never going to get anywhere. So if you have high blood sugars, if you are a type two, have been diagnosed as a type two diabetic, and the only strategy in place is to try and bring down the blood sugars, you're not finding the mechanisms to what is causing the blood sugars to rise. So the investigation has to be in what systems, what organs affect blood sugar, what systems help this game be played. And so my first question to anybody, has anybody ever looked? So right here, we have the organ systems that affect blood sugar regulation. First and foremost, your brain. Your brain is the master controller of your body. It controls and coordinates every living cell in your body. So what components of the brain are not communicating correctly? It's hormone production, it's glandular uh, sensitivity, it's understanding of what the, com the communication systems are doing amongst the body and coordination of your organs. And so there's different areas of the brain, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, to name a few that really regulate the feedback loops of the brain to understand what's going on and to send and direct messages out to the different organs to do their jobs. So has anybody really ever, ever looked at those areas of your brain correctly to understand what's happening. How about the thyroid? The thyroid is the master metabolic governor of the body. So it's involved in helping you detoxify, helping you create energy, helping you rebuild and repair and grow and metabolize. And so if we're not looking at the thyroid closely, the answer might be in there. The next one, the liver. The liver is the master detoxifier of the body. And it also is the producer of sugar. So it is called gluconeogenesis. So the, produ the production of new sugar. So is the liver functioning correctly? Or the question is why, it, why might it over be, be overproducing sugar? So think of this. If you're on a 500 calorie diet, if you're on a no carb diet, so you're literally taking in no sugar and you're still seeing your blood sugar sky high, maybe even in the morning on fasting, this is the dude that's overproducing it, 
Or the other question is, is why are you not getting rid of it? But the, the liver is so often overlooked in its position to uh, regulate the functionality of blood sugar. So we have to look in depth at the functionality of the liver to understand what the system is doing. Okay, your intestinal system. So microbial overgrowth or subclinical gut infections. So bacteria, yeast, funguses, even parasites can affect the regulation of blood sugar as well as the absorption of your nutrients. So I don't think anybody's ever looking into your gut system and understanding exactly what that intestinal system is doing, what pathogens it's housing, what interference it's having, how it's provoking the immune system. So there's a lot that happens and a lot that can be uncovered in the gut. Your kidneys, nobody's looking at your kidneys. The only time they're gonna start looking at your kidneys is when you're gonna to start to incur complications and your filtration rate starts to decrease and your creatinine levels and your, and your urine nitrogen levels start to go up and that's when the doctor's like, oh, you've got kidney stress. Oh, you've got stage one or stage two. Let's keep an eye on it. So nobody's ever really understanding what role this has in blood sugar regulation. And the last one right there is the pancreas because everything's blamed on the pancreas. So your pancreas doesn't work right. So you have type two diabetes. All right, but nobody ever looks, is there still production of insulin out of the pancreas? And the question more times than not, in fact, that's never a no is, is the pancreas function correctly? And it's typically yes, if not all the time, yes. You just have to look for the right markers and understand how much insulin is being produced. So this is a comprehensive look into the organ systems that help regulate blood sugar. And again, it goes back to, if you're just trying to beat down blood sugars, you're never finding the causative factors to why your blood sugars are abnormal, irregular, or erratic to begin with. The last one here, has anyone ever looked in depth at your cardiovascular system? The cardiovascular system takes on significant stress when you move into a diabetic situation. And so typically markers that would demonstrate elevated risk factors to heart attack and stroke are never ever run. And think of this, the first symptom of a heart attack is a heart attack. So if we're not looking to see how much stress the cardiovascular system is under, then we're gonna be in trouble. The real question as I already asked is, why are we overproducing? So why are we producing too much sugar or why are we not getting rid of it? And that's the question. And that's the first thing that we need to uncover is that exact thing. If you're not eating anything and you're waking up with two or 300 level blood sugars in the morning without eating anything, why are your blood sugar so high? And it does go down to insulin resistance, but why is your body producing so much? All right, the other, the other question is why is it not getting rid of it or why is it not utilizing it? And so when you look at insulin resistance, and this is just a a quick diagram of a cell, we have why you're not producing it, why you're not getting rid of it, or what's the malfunction at the cellular level, all right, this isn't even organs, this is cellular level of why you're not able to be uh, sensitive to insulin. Okay, so what's the mechanism gone wrong? It's typically a cellular dysfunction. It's actually a protective mechanism. And so that's just demonstrated in here. I'm not gonna get into the physiology of it, but just wanna show you that hyperglycemia and the, the resistance to insulin is a protective mechanism in the cell. And we have 400 trillion cells in our body. If we're not utilizing sugar correctly, if we're not sensitive to insulin, you're not gonna be able to drive sugar in the cell. When you can't drive sugar into the cell, you cannot create usable energy for your cells, thus you will expire. That's why type two diabetes is an energy depriving disease at its root cause. And if we continue to play the blood sugar game, you're not gonna get well, you're gonna get worse over time, not better. And so you can see this now, this is beta cell failure. Over time, when you continue to pack on the medications, when you get into the insulin injections and you continue to drive all the stuff that's gonna hammer down blood sugars in the body, you're gonna create more insulin resistance as you see here and the, and the consequences 
of insulin resistance. And ultimately, when you look at B cell failure, which is beta cell failure, you are going to wear out the pancreas so you can no longer produce your own insulin. So this is the, this is the problem in the standard of care right now is that we're not looking for the causative factors. We're just using things to try and beat down your blood sugars, which ultimately is not doing anything to improve the condition or the situation. Is it managing it? Yes, because we know high blood sugars are dangerous, but it's not doing anything to change the trajectory of the disease or the situation that's happening. So let's look at a couple different things in the blood sugar system. So forever we're looking at quantity. So A1C and blood sugar, that's the quantity, but nobody's looking at the quality of your system. And so the blood sugar system, the quality of glucose control lies in this situation right here, this, the glycemic triad, which ultimately is called your glycomark. And glycomark is measuring the quality of your blood sugar. And so a representation of glycomark looks exactly like this. It's measuring your peaks in your valley. So how high your blood sugar spikes post meal and how low can that sugar get, which would be reactive hypoglycemia. And so what you're, what you're seeing here is in this red representation, this red line, you can see heavy peaks over 300 and valleys down to almost 70 or 60. And so over time, that's more problematic to the system to have these heavy peaks and valleys. That's the quality of the system. And the, and the treatment, the initial treatment is designed to bring those back into closer parameters to each other. So we don't want these to be way off, uh, these far away from each other. We need to bring these back into uh, normal parameters. So the representation here, this is two people that have the same A1C, so they both have seven, but you can see how, how that one in the red is much more out of control than the blue one. So that's glycomark, that's the quality of the system, and that needs to be fixed first before anything else happens, okay? So the quality relates to these things right here. So when you look at increased oxidative stress, anything oxidative stress is pro-inflammatory. So inflammatory response and the production of inflammation is all based on the quality of the system. Hyperglycemic tendencies, that's another inflammation producer. So inflammation is ultimately going to break down your cells even further and create the problems and complications that we see, the quintessential complications and um, problems that we see with type 2 diabetes. But then when you get lower on this list, the next one is decreased fat thermogenesis. So the, the less quality of your blood sugar system, the less ability to burn fat. And that is a big key here because I don't care if you're overweight or underweight, but if you can't create thermogenesis to burn fat, especially brown fat, the deep fat around your viscera, you're going to be in big trouble. And then here you go, micro and macro vascular complications. So the complications are going to come in the cardiovascular system due to the quality of the blood sugar system. So like I said, it's got to get under control first. And then the other things that are linked to quality is mood, depression, and poor quality of life. So if quality is not being taken care of first, you're not going to get the situation correct and you're not going to get diabetes remissed and you're not going to you know, increase and improve and change your metabolic capacity to metabolize and, and burn sugar. And then you can get into the quantity. The quantity is just these numbers. It's A1C and blood sugar, all right, and glucose. So ultimately, if you're not taking care of the source of the problem, you're spinning your wheels. You're going to continue to have the mechanisms present that are creating high sugars, and you're just using the medications to beat those down, and even supplements for that matter. So if you're just taking blood sugar lowering supplements, you're doing no better than the medications, obviously without the side effects, but you'll never get the mechanisms correct, and that's what this video is all about. So what's wrong with my blood sugar? You have to find the mechanisms. That's the, that's the answer to this video, is that if you're not looking for what's causing high blood sugars, you're not going to start the process of remission with type 2 diabetes. I'm Dr. Josh. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.